How you doing? Yes, sir. See ya. Are we good to get started? Okay. Chris, are you good? Okay. Good evening. Is that working? Okay, that works much better. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, I'd like to call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Meridian Planning and Zoning Commission for the date of November 1st, 2018. And let's begin with roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Holland? Here. Commissioner Casanelli? Here. Commissioner Fitzgerald? Here. Commissioner Yearsley? Here. And absent are Commissioners McCarville, Wilson, and Perot. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, one change on our agenda, we will be opening um, Buy Right LLC Apartments, CUP, um, H2018-0096, just for the opportunity to continue it. It was not properly posted, and so we will be moving that application to November 15th. Uh, so if you're here for that, um, that will be continued to November 15th. Um, could I get a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same. We have a motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, and we have two items on the agenda on the consent agenda. Um, can I get a motion to approve the approve the minutes from October 18th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting and the facts or the findings of facts and conclusion of law for this, the Goddard School? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And at this time, um, we'd like to give a brief explanation on how we handle the public hearing process for this evening. Uh, we will open each item individually and then start with the staff report. The staff reports the findings um, regarding how the item adheres to our comprehensive plan and uniform development code with the staff's recommendations. After the staff has made their recommendations or their presentation, the applicant will come forward to present their case for the approval of their application and respond to any staff comments. The, application, or the applicant will have 15 minutes to do so. After the applicant has finished their public testimony, there is a sign-up sheet in the back as you entered, um, or there's a, I guess it's an iPad now, um, to sign up to testify. Any person wishing to testify will come forward and be allowed three minutes. Uh, if they're speaking for a larger group like an HOA and there's a show of hands in the audience and who they're speaking for, uh, they can represent the group and have 10 minutes to speak. Um, after all testimony has been heard by the, uh, the applicant will come back up and have another 10 minutes to close. Um, if they respond to questions and, and do any follow-up they want to. And after that, we will close the public hearing and the commissioners will have an opportunity to discuss and deliberate over before making a recommendation on the application. Um, so at this time, I'd like to move to open the public hearing on H2018-0096 uh, by right LLC apartments for the opportunity to continue that application. Uh, so moved. Well, we're not... Motion. Op motioning open. You just open it. I'm opening the public hearing. Mr. Chair, um, I, re I make a motion that we continue file number H2018-0096 to the hearing date of November 15, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second to continue H2018-0096 until the date of November 15, 2018. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you very much, and we'll continue that until November 15th. Moving on to the next agenda item um, is Del Taco. It's H2018-0106, and we will start with the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, first application before you tonight is a request for a conditional use permit. This site consists of 0.72 of an acre of land. It's on CC and located at 1617 West Island Green Drive at the southwest corner of North Linder Road and West Island Green Drive. Adjacent land use and zoning uh, to the north is rural residential properties owned RUT in Ada County. To the east is North Linder Road and mixed use commercial development zone C3DA in the city of Eagle. And to the south and west is vacant undeveloped land zone CC. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation is mixed use community. 
The applicant is requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a drive through establishment within 300 feet of a residential district and existing residences in the CC zoning district. The site plan, uh, as shown, complies with the specific use standards in the UDC for drive through establishments. Access is proposed via West Island Green Drive. A cross-access easement exists between all lots in the subdivision. Street buffer landscaping along Linder and Island Green Drive was, um, and Chinden was, um, actually Chinden isn't adjacent to this site, but anyway, it was completed with the subdivision improvements. <laughs> Parking is proposed to be provided on the site in accord with UDC standards. To uh, reduce traffic conflicts with vehicles exiting the drive through and vehicles entering and ex existing um, exiting, excuse me, the parking area from West Island Green Drive, staff is recommending some revisions to the site plan. And I just did a markup here on the site plan. Um, at a landscape planner island on the west side of the center row of parking, that's the green area you should see there, and then restrict the two spaces on the west side of the parking lot, marked with X's to employee parking only. And uh, lastly, consider extending the curb, that red line, uh, where vehicles exit the drive through across the first drive aisle to funnel traffic from the drive through through the westernmost drive aisle. Conceptual building elevations were cemented as shown. Uh, building materials consist of stucco with standing metal seam awnings. Final design is required to comply with the design standards in the architectural standards manual. No written testimony has been received um, on this application. Staff is recommending approval with the conditions in Exhibit B of the staff report. Staff will stand for any questions. Do we have any questions of staff? Yeah. Would the applicant like to come forward? Sir, please give us your name and address before you start, please. Oh, close to you. There you go. Tom Lenz, the first at Architects. 310 North 5th Street, Boise. Tom Lennon <laughs> with Erstad Architects, uh, representing Rocky Mountain Companies, the developer of the property. Um, we do not have any, con we, well, we have no response negatively to the staff report. We're in full agreement. If uh, we'd prefer not to have that uh, buffer in red that was shown on the on the screen, but if that's a deal breaker, we're okay with it. Um, we did not get a written response back to Sonia until later this afternoon after she uh, requested it today, mainly because we were making sure that all the conditions that were asked for we could do with our engineering crew and landscape so we're good with everything that's here any questions of the applicant mr. Yearsley uh, mr. chair um, can I ask why you don't want the little island in red just uh, I've got a feeling that we're gonna be asked to eliminate some of the parking adjacent to the building just for for backup on that on that driveway um, so we'd like to keep that if at all possible. Um, we'd like to try and maintain as many of those parking spaces as we can. Okay. The two employee over on the west side, no big deal. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. No, I'm, I just, just was curious. Sure. Thank you. And, sir, just for the record, the, the ordering um, platform or the squawk box is pointed south towards Chinden, correct? Correct. So yes. it's away from anything that would be. Yep. Yeah, away from the north, which is the closest residential that we okay. have. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions for applicant? I think so. Thank you, sir, very much. Okay. Chris, do we have any signed up willing to testify? Mr. Chair, you have five signed in, three wishing to testify. The first was the applicant. Um, next is Andrew Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, if you want to come up and state your name and address for the record, please. Andrew Lawrence, 1685 West Brant Lane, Meridian. I am 50 feet or less from that facility. The exit 
comes right in my back door and all my windows for the bedrooms. Why does it have to face that way? Why can't the exit come in uh, from the, I mean the uh, drive-through come in from the, from the west and then go south and then exit after they get their stuff? Why does it have to go west, I mean uh, east and then north aiming right at my house, less than 50 feet away, and then going west. That's my only complaint. These people have every right to build a business there. They uh, stated the night that you had the, uh, the new high school uh, planning and zoning thing, they were supposed to have been here and met with us. We got a letter from them that there was a no-show. And then a couple of weeks ago, they had a cancellation when they were supposed to come for planning and zoning. And they postponed it until tonight. They've been very uncooperative as far as I'm concerned. They made no attempt, knowing there's a house right there, to stop and talk to us. Others have. So I'm really upset about this. And I object totally to the plan of their entrance and exit to the drive through If that can be fixed or they can put in big shrubs to block the light, then I'd go along with it. And on my house, I don't know if you guys have ever driven by there, I'm sure you have, uh, I have uh, some skyrocket junipers on the lender's side that go the full, almost the full length of my uh, property. And they were put there by, I uh, can't remember his first name, but Eisenberg, the developer, to help us with the development across the street, which was uh, Fred Meyer. I'm not asking for that on my property. I'm asking for something like that on their property so they can shield us from their lights or change the direction. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Yearsley. Um, so I, I think the reason why they wanted to go this way is because the speaker, when they talk to the microphone, is facing away from your property. And so that's kind of why they're, I think that's why they tried to do it that way. And so you wouldn't have the sound from the speaker going towards your property. And so um, I, I guess my question is, is would you rather have the sound or the light? We could potentially make, add some shrubs for that if. Are you familiar with Taco Bell across the street? I'm not. I can hear their drive through. I can hear their speakers. And at 5.30 on Thursday mornings, I can hear the trash trucks come and shake their dumpster. <laughs> now, what's going to happen 50 feet away from me when they come and shake these guys' dumpster? I'm going to get up at 5.30 or whatever time they come, whether I want to or not. Right. Uh, they, can, they can shield those speakers and put something, something uh, on the edge of it to, I, I understand, to suppress that sound. It doesn't, I mean, it's not going to be aiming at my house. Right, right. But uh, that can be dealt with. Okay. And it can also be dealt with with shrubbery. Right. Okay. I, I just wanted no, to ask. I, I understand. Thank you. Uh, the lights are, are equally as bad as the sound, but oh, I would say they're probably a little worse. I, I totally understand. In fact, uh, there is an Idaho City credit union, or the credit union across the street mm -hmm. in that uh, Fred Meyer shopping center. And when people come through uh, to their drive through, their lights aim right at my house. But what they did was they built a, uh, a retaining wall that shields those lights. It's only the great big fancy trucks like mine that would do that. <laughs> And it would go above that. Okay. But, I mean, there's so many yeah. or problems that. Any other questions, Mr. Chairman? No, Mr. Castanelli. Um, so you're you're the property adjacent to Linder. Is that correct? To the yes, north on of the this. Corner. Okay. Do you have a fence in your in your backyard? Uh, we have uh, vinyl fencing. Is it a standard six foot fence? Oh no, it's uh, like a 
four or five foot fence, okay. but it's it's the vinyl uh, farm fencing. Oh, the farm. Okay, like a three rail fence. Okay. I had to train my dogs not to go under it. <laughs> Important there. Thank you. Any additional questions? Thank you, sir, very much. We You're appreciate welcome. it. Next is uh, Casimir Sergey. Did I? Please. You can bring an interpreter. Oh no, he wants to testify for the church. I think. My apologies. Thank you. We'll make a change, the church application. And that was everyone. Is anyone in the audience wish to testify in this application that hasn't yet or hasn't been called? Would the applicant like to come back up and respond? Name again? Yes, sir. Tom Lennon with Thurstead Architects. Um, our apologies to Mr. Chestnut. Uh, screening, we can provide no issues there. Uh, I think we could, we'd be more than happy to work with the planning department as do we want something more solid or do we want to do some, you know, if we can stagger the, the screening, maybe start it at the berm uh, adjacent to the street. Um, the one point I would like to make is uh, that Commissioner Yearsley, that you brought up, and I appreciate that. Because the speaker is facing south, we also have the building between the, the gentleman's house and our speaker, which is a lot different than what Taco Bell is across the street. Um, and uh, as far as the trash guys, I think, I don't know what we can do about that. But, but as far as the screening and the, and the lights, I totally understand that. We'll, we've, I've just spoken with the client. We can easily get that taken care of in our design review. Mr. Chair. Holland. One question. Could you clarify what the hours of operation will look like for this facility? I, seven? The, the hours of operation. How early they'll be open and how late they'll be open. Yeah. So 11 in the morning till 10 at night. Thank you. No early morning, 5.30 breakfast. And Sonia, this is a CUP, so in working with um, the applicant to make sure proper uh, landscaping or buffering, I guess, of um, the gentleman's house, how would we put that in place? Mr. Chair, <laughs> staff would appreciate some Pretty clear direction from the commission. <laughs> Got it. Staff is happy to work with the applicant to, to get there, but some clear direction would be good. Also, if you're inclined to restrict the hours of operation, that would also be something um, that you would need to recommend in the staff report. Commissioner Yearsley, go right ahead, sir. Mr. Chair, um, so clear direction, do you mean by shrubs or a fence? Or do we just want to say screening and let you decide? I just want to make sure that what that clear direction. Um, <laughs> but I can I, I I think from that I, I more think details we can. the better. Um, okay. If you're if you're going with landscaping, it would be good to know you know spacing. If we're talking, you know location. If we're talking on this property or on the neighbor's property, he might prefer being on their on his property. But that's that's something you may want to ask him. Um, and I guess the question is, do you have room for a, a, a small fence along your edge of your property to, mm -hmm. to put up there? Because I think the fence would be a better screen than, than landscaping. Yeah, we're good. Okay. We would, yeah, we can do the solid fence, and we probably want to screen it from the street side, though, just to make sure we buffer that a little bit. Okay. Nope, I'm, I'm side. That, that works. Mr. Okay. Chair? Mr. Costner. Is there, would you have, a, if it was a fence, something solid like that, would you have a preference? Um, of a of a material, do you want? I mean, stone versus versus a fence. As the architect, what would you? I think I. 
I'd rather not choose that tonight if possible. <clears throat> if I could do a solid fence of some kind that, and we could work with staff through D DR and CZC, I think we can come up with a solution that would work for, for all parties. Okay. Bill, did you want to add anything to the discussion? I know. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, certainly uh, if you, the applicant has to go through design review. Um, as part of screening requirements, we typically want a, a wall or any kind of mechanical screening. We want it to complement the design or the, the architecture of the building. So I think we could probably get there with the applicant if they're willing to do more than just a wood fence or a vinyl fence, but to, at least when they're designing this and working with us, that they think about that context as part of the design review application and incorporate some of those same materials so it's, it's a cohesive design and we get something attractive along that street. If I may, um, there's no stone on our buildings, there, and if we could try to incorporate something with the colors, the plaster, or the metals that are that are on the building, I'd prefer something that way, rather than a stone that's kind of. It's stucco, there, correct, yeah. sir? It's a so, stucco, stucco building. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, Any we'll additional questions, um, Mr. Chair? Commissioner Castano, um, or Yearsley, I can't. I'm looking both ways. <laughs> Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sonia, do you have issues with uh, removing the uh, the red island, that your island in red? Um, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Yearsley, Commissioners, I do not. It was actually a recommendation, and okay. it was worded as such in the staff report, so they can take it or leave it. Um, okay. if you would prefer that it be there, though. However, you can make that change to the staff report. Um, I would like to actually, I just realized that I forgot a condition of approval in the staff report that needs to be there. Um, Hours of operation in the CC uh, zoning district, um, when adjacent to residential uses, um, is restricted from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, there is a local street that separates um, this site from the residential, so it's not directly adjacent to it, but if that is something that you would wish to include in the conditions, um, please note that. Are you good with those? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any additional questions for staff or the applicant? Mr. Chair, just Commissioner one Hall. question. Um, when Sonia was giving some conversations about what we could or couldn't do, I wonder if we want to ask the uh, gentleman who has the house on the corner of Island Green and Linder, while we still have the hearing open, if perhaps it would be better to work, have this tenant work with them to build the fence on their side rather than having a fence on the this property itself, if we want to have that conversation? Well, I think he talked about it. He'd prefer the screening to be on their pro on okay. their property, not on the other side of the street. And I, I think that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, working off property gets a little hairy, especially because that's not, this chunk right here is not his property. This right. Back there. Okay. So. Mr. Chair? If, yes, ma'am. If I may, um, what I heard, which may or may not be correct <laughs> from the neighbor, was that he didn't expect it to be put on his place, on oh. his property. So you, if you, you want a yeah. clarification from him. Sir, would you mind stepping back for just right? Come, would you come forward, sir, again, and give us your thoughts if, if you would like this um, landscaping on your property or on the um, Del Taco property? Do you want to name an address again? Please, Andrew that'd be great. Lawrence, 1685 West Brant Lane, Meridian, Idaho. Uh, I was speaking of shrubbery. I would not like that on my property. If there was alteration to my fence, uh, I would not object to that as long as, you know, it was discussed and I agreed on what they decided to do. There's also, uh, I don't know, who owns the, or who they consider the ownership of the uh, easement from the outside of my fence to the street. Uh, that would be a good place for, for shrubbery or whatever. But I'm willing to, to work with them. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not totally a bad guy. <laughs> okay. Any questions, any additional questions? Thank you, sir, very much for the clarification. Thank you. Would the applicant like to come back real quick? <laughs> Any additional thoughts on uh, 
working with them on a, on a fence for his property or or how would you guys rather handle it? Would you rather handle it on your property or on, on his? We'd prefer on our property. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just to make everything clean. We start working on another property. It's and it's city property between us and him. So, yeah. Okay. Any additional questions? I don't think so. Mr. Mr. Chair. Oh, not for, the, not for the applicant. Okay. I, I, Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Mr. Castanelli, go ahead. I did have a uh, question for staff. Is 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 this one pad site? Is this is that is there a, a DA that that's over all those the businesses that are going in that CC section there? Are they all independent? And the reason I'm asking is for fencing material. Whatever we um, whatever we make a, a motion for, does it need to? Is there a given materials or anything or that that fit within? I know there's a bank right next to that, and I believe there's a and the other businesses that are going in. Is your question, is there a development agreement on this Correct. Property? It would govern a fence or something. I think it has to go through there the is a development of, agreement on this property, but it doesn't speak to what's been discussed here tonight. We can. If, if, you're, if you're wanting to make a requirement for this development, you need to make it with a conditional use permit. That's before you tonight. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions to staff? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Castanelli. I move we uh, close the public hearing on item number 4B, Del Taco, H-2018-0106. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on H-2018-0106. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion, motion passes. OK. Who wants to start? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Yearsley. Um, I, I think, you know, based on the discussion that we had, um, I like the idea of a fence um, being on their property. Um, I don't know if I really care to tell them what it is as long as they work with staff and, and have it be um, complementary to their building. Um, I think between the architect and the staff, they can come up with a, a look that will look well. Um, because I can tell you I can't. That's not under my purview. So, um, uh, and I do, um, I understand the applicant's request not wanting to put that uh, one island in, but I think the other island that uh, Sonia, the one in green, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, it'll be a lot cleaner to have that in there. And uh, I understand with his, if you know, trying to back out, if, if he has that there, the, the couple of parking spots close to the building may end up having to go away or reconfigured. So um, I think with the green one, I think it'll help with the traffic flow, make it a lot cleaner. So that's, that's what I would recommend. Commissioner Holland. Mr. Chair, um, one question for staff too. Um, I'm sorry, I missed this one earlier. Do we have any proposed projects for south of the site currently? I know we, we saw one that was a, a bank somewhat recently that came through. Yes, we do. There was a car wash that was recently approved there. Just, just another a couple thoughts. I don't want to beat this to <laughs> death. But <laughs> on the, on the um, screening requirements, um, you might leave an out. If you're leaning towards a fence in your recommendation or your decision, I should say, um, you might leave an out, maybe require that or as as agreed upon with the, with the neighbor and the applicant. Um, typically, we don't like to um, provide too much screening of drive-throughs. We, we want it to be visible for public surveillance from the streets, for the officers and whatnot for safety. This particular site is open from Linder Road, um, but I, I just want to be careful and not totally wall it off either from um, Island Green, so. And Sonia, we've done just like 10 foot wall sections before, like brick ones yeah. that are, yeah. that are sh that shield the sound or the right. the lights. Yeah, so I, I think would, we can come to some agreement and I'd be willing to facilitate a meeting with the applicant and the neighbor as well if that would help. So anyway, that's my thought. Well, and, and my, my thinking of a fence was just wide enough for the screening for the lights. So I wasn't talking about yeah. the entire property, so. 
And that's my my take as well. Is I'd want it to be as wide as it needs Absolutely. to be to block the the lights, but not any wider. Because I I think they wouldn't want it for marketing purposes, but and and the police wouldn't want it for being able to track what's going on there. So that would be my take. Yeah. Uh, the only other thoughts I have too. I I would agree. I think the landscape buffer on the west side of the property makes a lot of sense to help traffic flow. I don't see having the the spot that's designated in red with the uh, cons extending the curb is something I would necessarily want to see. I think it could be, I know sometimes when I go through a drive through and I may be missing some sauces or whatever to go with my tacos, sometimes it's easier to pull back in the parking lot and run back inside rather than loop all the way back around. Um, but yeah, that, I think that would be the only change I would, I would request aside from having some sort of landscaping buffer and um, I'm open to leaving some discretion for staff and the applicant to work with the, the neighbor on what would be appropriate there. Okay. Commissioner Casanelli, do you have any thoughts? Um, I'm, I'm in agreement with my fellow commissioners uh, that we come up with a, a satisfactory screen. I don't think that we need the curb extended in the red. I do, and just to clarify, Sonia, did, uh, the green, what, uh, what, what's, what's the intent in the green there? Chairman, commissioners, the intent of the green is so that we don't have traffic coming in the access here, driving in this way. We don't have traffic going in this way, conflicting with the drive through traffic coming out. Um, that one was more important to staff, and that is a requirement, unless you guys make a change to it. And this one, again, was just a, the red line was just a recommendation. Okay. And just one more note. Um, no more notes. As Sorry. you can. <laughs> <laughs> The neighbor that testified, I believe, his property is right here. Um, it, it looks like, if you note the kind of pink area on the north side of the road, and that was that um, kind of buffer area that already had some landscaping in it. That is um, part of this subdivision. Yep. So possibly some landscaping could be put on that lot rather than neighbor's property or on this property. You know, I, I would think that would be a good option. And I'm up with giving staff the, and the applicant and the neighbor a leeway to make a good decision. I think, I think working with the developer is going to be working off your own property gets oh, challenging. Oh, absolutely. No, so. I, I understand. But you know, I, I heard the comment be specific, but then we're getting all sorts of different options. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my take. So whoever wants to do the motion can yeah. design it any way they want. <laughs> my just. I agree with all of you about the, the red extension to the curb. I don't think that's necessary. I think the project works there. Um, I do appreciate the applicant being cognizant of the squawk box being away from the residential. Um, and I appreciate their willingness to work with that, with the neighbors to block their uh, headlights in the back of their house. And so I think in that regard, I would entertain a motion if there was any, unless there's additional comments. But I think a solid fence, a solid wall, or you know, some significant landscaping there and giving staff the leeway to do it would probably be my thought. Okay. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Yearsley. After considering all staff, applicant, and public testimony, I move to approve file number H2018-0106 as presented in the staff report for the hearing date of November 1st with the following modifications, that the condition uh, the, the hours of operation be limited to 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. and that um, the applicant work with the adjacent homeowner um, to come up with uh, an appropriate screening of the lights um, for, the, for the property, um, preferably a fence, but uh, hopefully a mutual agreeable solution. That's specific enough. I'll second. Just a clarification, are we, the extension of the curb, is that a, not a condition so that we have to worry about it? It was a recommendation, Got it. is what I understood. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay. Moving on to our next application. Um, open the public hearing on H2018-0105 Alturas Rezone, and we'll start with the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Um, this application is for a rezone. This site consists, consists of 
7.24 acres of land. It's owned IL, located at 1550 South Tech Lane. This property is part of a larger area that is subject to the terms of a planned development that was approved in 2001 that allowed professional and sales offices, a daycare center, and a community and neighborhood shopping center um, retail uses with approval of a conditional use permit, along with any allowed uses in the IL zoning district. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation for this property is commercial. The applicant is requesting a rezone of 7.24 acres of land from the IL to the CG zoning district consistent with the commercial future land use designation. The applicant is proposing to continue the current use of the property of retail, office, and church uses. No new development or redevelopment is proposed at this time. The applicant is requesting the terms of the previously approved plan development to no longer apply to this development as a provision of the subject rezone application. Um, through the development agreement. City services, uh, sewer, water, and police and fire protection are currently provided to this property. Due to the limited uh, sanitary sewer capacity available to this property, all new uh, proposed tenants should first obtain approval from the Public Works Department prior to leasing and occupying space within the building. There is an existing uh, full access for this site via South Tech Lane, a private local street, along the west boundary of the property. I'll just flip to the site plan here. Um, that is this road right here. I'm actually gonna just um, go into the aerial view of the property. It's a little easier to see here. So this is the property right here. So this is their existing access uh, via Tech Lane. And then they also have an existing full access uh, via Overland Road right here, which is an arterial street. Um, and they do share that access with the property to the east, the Intermountain Pet Hospital. The ingress access to this site via Overland is located on the adjacent property, uh, the veterinary property to the east, while their egress is located on this property. This is the sole access for the property to the east. Although the shared access physically exists and is being used by both parties, there is no ingress egress easement currently in place. The current configuration of the access via Overland and parking lot design on both properties is not a safe design and creates traffic conflicts and unsafe conditions. If you'll notice here, I'll just kind of zoom in, um, this island here kind of restricts traffic when they're coming around here to kind of pull in front of this um, driveway in here to get over here to the exit. Um, the same way coming in and going to this property. Uh, the two property owners are currently working together on a redesign of the entrance uh, to their properties and parking lots that will create a more safe access via Overland and circulation between both properties uh, with a new cross access driveway further to the north between the two properties. As part of the Certificate of Zoning Compliance for that project, the property owner was required to record a reciprocal cross-access ingress-egress easement with the subject property owner, which I understand is currently in process. The UDC requires access to be taken from a local street when available and restricts access to collector and arterial streets. This standard applies when there is a new expanded or extended use or development of the property, such as this, where the zoning and use is changing from industrial to a more intense commercial zoning and use. Because this site has access via a local street, uh, South Tech Lane access would typically be restricted to that access and access via the arterial street, Overland Road, would be terminated unless otherwise waived by city council. Because there is no uh, legal means of ingress to this property or egress for the adjoining property via Overland Road, if the applicant wishes to retain the access via Overland, staff recommends a reciprocal cross access ingress egress easement is recorded with the adjacent property to the east prior to rezone ordinance approval as a provision of the proposed rezone in accord with UDC 11-3A-3, which requires cross access easements to be granted to adjacent properties when access via a local street isn't available. A total of 222 off-street parking spaces currently exist on this site. However, the eastern portion of this parking lot is proposed to be reconfigured, as I mentioned, through a separate Certificate of Zoning Compliance application um, that was recently approved, which will result in a reduction in parking to 215 spaces. 
Based on the square footage of the building, uh, which is 106,000 square feet, a minimum of 212 spaces are required. The existing and proposed parking complies with the minimum UDC standards, although staff is concerned there will be adequate parking uh, for the uses. The applicant should be mindful of the type of potential uh, tenants and their parking needs to ensure adequate parking continues to be provided on the site. Street buffers, landscaping, and sidewalks exist on this site along West Overland Road and South uh, Tech Lane in accord with UDC standards. There are two existing loading docks um, areas on the west and one on the east end of the building <coughs> facing Overland Road, and that is these areas right here that the applicant wishes to continue using. Um, current design standards do not allow loading docks and areas to face an arterial street. Um, however, because the loading docks were law lawfully constructed at the time, they are considered a non-conforming use and as such are allowed to remain and be used subject to the standards listed in the UDC for non-conforming uses. Staff is recommending approval uh, with the requirement of a development agreement um, containing the provisions in the staff report. Staff will stand for any questions. Any questions for staff? Thank you, Sonia. Oh. One, one question, sorry. Mr. Holland. Um, Sonia, the, the biggest benefit of them going through this rezone is just so they can have the existing uses continue the way that they should because it's commercial rather than light industrial? Yes, yes, and not have to go through a conditional use permit. Thank you. Additional questions? Would the applicant like to come forward, please? Please state your name and address for us. Members of the commission, my name is Heath Clark, 251 East Front Street in Boise. I'm with the law firm of Spink Butler, representing the applicant. Um, just a, a couple brief comments. Um, this idea came up shortly after my clients acquired the property in a, in a meeting with Bill, uh, and we, we were discussing you know, the, the way that the property has been used, but the way that it was anticipated to be used in the future. Um, the, the rezone, as Sonia mentioned, matches the comp comprehensive plan designation of commercial. It also helps us with some of our, with our, our tenant mix. Um, here's an example. Is one of our primary tenants is a furniture consignment store. It's been a great tenant. They'd like to take more space. It's easier to accommodate that in, an, uh, in a commercial zone than it is in the light industrial. Um, no, as Sonia mentioned, no site changes are proposed with the application. We are in agreement with the terms and conditions of the staff report. I just need to make one comment about that. I try really hard to make Sonia happy. It's like one of the main things that I do in life. Um, and I got really close on this one. So we've been talking a lot about this cross access with the vet on the east. This uh, has quite a bit of, of history. We've, we've been working through this. We, we actually had a CZC on this property six or eight months ago, and we did give a conditional easement there that was conditioned on our neighbor giving us an easement, but we just haven't quite gotten to the end of those discussions. As Sonia mentioned, we are very close. We have a CZC that, that's approved. We have an, an easement agreement that has been drafted. We're, we're, we should have this wrapped up prior to going to council. But I just want to state a reservation, let's put it that way, that if for some reason those negotiations go sideways, that I'd like to be able to revisit that condition by the time we get to council. But what I'm proposing now, because I like to make Sonia happy, is to stick with the conditions as they're currently drafted and just have this on the record in the meantime. Any questions? Any questions for the applicant? My only comment was we all like to make Sonia happy. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> a happy Sonia makes us all happy. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions for the applicant at this time? Thanks, Heath. We Thank appreciate you. it. Chris, anybody signed up to testify? There was nobody signed in. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to testify on this application? Heath, do you need to say anything else? Okay. Is there any additional? Okay. Oh, Commissioner Holland. I was just going to make a motion. You go right ahead, ma'am. Close the public hearing for um, the Alturas Rezone, H-2018-0105. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on all tourist rezone H2018-0105. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion pass, and we will close the public hearing. Any thoughts? Slam dunk. Uh, yeah. No one's, no one's against it, and it's just trying to make it easier for them to do their business. I, 
don't know why. And my only comment, and Heath, we appreciate your guys' working with them. I, I think trying to get that the access point for both places, because they cross, which I think is nuts, oh, yeah. um, trying to get that cleaned up would be, we very much appreciate that. I think the pet hospital and their tenant or their owner would be, I think it would be a good thing for that area. That's a crazy, um, weird intersection. And so we applaud your efforts to get that cleaned up. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. The only comment I had, it always pains me a little bit when we uh, have these nice industrial buildings that turn into commercial uses because there's just not a, a lot of inventory in the valley for nice industrial spaces. But with the tenants that they have and the operation that they want to move forward with, um, I don't have any concerns with changing the use to make it a little bit more easy for the, the customers they're serving. I entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Castanelli. After considering all staff applicant public testimony, I move to recommend approval to city council. This isn't a CUP, right? No, it's a rezone. Of city council file number H-2018-0105 is presented a staff report for the hearing date of November 1st, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes and we appreciate it. Congratulations, good luck. Thanks guys. Okay, moving on to the next application. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing on H2018-0110 Solomita Church and start with the staff report. Members of the commission, um, the next application before you is a request for a conditional use permit. This site consists of 8.49 acres of land. It's zoned R8, located at 4973 West Cherry Lane at the southwest corner of West Cherry Lane and North Black Cat Road. Adjacent land uses and zoning to the north and south are rural residential and agricultural uses, zoned RUT in Ada County. To the west is vacant undeveloped land, uh, zoned R8. It's also owned by the um, subject property owner. And to the east is Black Cat Road and single family residential property zoned R4. This property was annexed back in 2014 and a conditional use permit was approved for a church um, for the same use and same church and everything, but it um, has since expired from that time. So that's why they're reapplying. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation is medium density residential. A conditional use permit is requested for a 28,457 square foot church facility in an R8 zoning district. There is an existing um, vacant home and accessory structures on this site. Um, those are located here at the bottom corner of the development. The applicant is requesting approval for the home to be used as a job trailer during the construction of the church and they will remove all structures prior to issuance of certificate of occupancy for the church. One access via Black Cat Road and one access uh, via West Cherry Lane is proposed for the site as shown. Uh, the access via Black Cat is required to align with uh, West Thorn Creek Street across the street to the east as required by ACHD. Parking is provided on the site in accord with UDC standards. A minimum of 57 off-street parking spaces are required. 191 spaces are proposed. A 25-foot wide uh, landscape street buffer and sidewalk is required to be constructed along the entire frontage of the development on Cherry and Black Cat. Ten Mile Creek uh, runs along the south boundary of the site and is required to be protected during construction. A 10-foot wide pathway is required to be constructed along the north side of the creek with development in accord with the pathway's master plan. There are um, no written testimony. There is no written testimony on this application, and staff is recommending approval with the conditions in the report. Uh, staff will stand for any questions. Any questions for staff? The applicant like to come forward. Please. Please provide your name and address for the record, please, sir. Thank you, Commissioners. It's my own. Matthew Garner. Uh, my address is uh, 224 16th Avenue South in Nampa, 83651. Um, as Sonia just said, the, app, the, the, the CUP was issued back in 2015. It did expire and now the church is ready to proceed with the work and so we're applying for the conditional use permit to be reinstated or continued. Um, conditions of approval are great with us. I did have one question. Um, it says that the future structure and site design shall comply with the design standards and the architecture standards manual. Will this be addressed? Because we already have the building designed. 
Um, will we be able to address this during a design review or a CZC? Sonia, when you want to cover that real quick? Did you hear me, Sonia? Sorry, I did not. Would you repeat the question, please? Um, item number eight, we will have to still go through design review and a CZC yes. so we can address to make sure that our architectural design, which is already complete, will comply with the architectural design standards. Yes, that okay. is in the staff report. Okay. Yes. So yeah, that's all I have is just uh, we're, we're excited to get it going. Very good. Any questions for the applicant? I do have a Mr. question. Mr. Like, right. Um In the uh, lower left, I guess that would be the the southwest corner of the property. Are there, uh, it says, uh, unmodified portion of parcel. Are existing plans for that, or is it? I can't see the map from here. Where are we at? Down there, it's... Uh, the southwest, I, you see? I don't know if that's just grass area, or... Everything behind the, the church is going to be designed basically it, to it have... It should be on your screen. Is it, is there's it, nothing on this thing. So, But everything behind the, the, the church itself, where those buildings are down there that will be removed, that will all be activity fields. So it will be basically sod back there. Okay. Thank you. Now you, now you destroyed everything, Chris. <laughs> Is uh, Sonia, why he's bringing that up, is that in our uh, an agreement as well that that is all going to turn into sod and, and activity fields rather than how it's presented here as it kind of being undeveloped um, or unmodified? Part, yes. It's part, it's part of the use. Okay. I just want to make sure that's on record. Any additional questions? The applicant. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Chris, is there anyone signed up to testify on this application? There are 21 persons signed in to indicating they wish to testify. Um, Anton Boyarchuk. Hello, sir. Please give us your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Anton Boyarchuk, 399 East Santiago Drive, Meridian, Idaho. And I am here uh, to say that I approve this church building because we need to grow. You know, because our church is growing and we need to grow. I am a full-pledged board member of this church, and I approve what they're all doing, trying to accommodate this in a very timely manner because it's been going on for a very long time and we decided to actually build a church. We need to grow. We are growing and numbers are stacking. We just really seriously want to build this church, have a place to gather, have our children grow, have a school, have a daycare, something similar to that, something down the road with some other upgrades if possible. Um, I approve of this. I have nothing else to say. You're welcome. Any questions? Thank you very much. Casimir Sergey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to, my name is Sergei Kazimir, and my address is 5431 North Black Sand Avenue, Meridian, Idaho, 83646. And I am, I am uh, <clears throat> a part of the church, and we are so excited about this building, building project. And we hope <clears throat> everyone, a lot of individuals can get whatever they need from the Lord for their souls. And that's be a good blessing for the community. Thank you. Thanks, sir, we Thank appreciate you. it. Is there anyone else who would like to testify on this application? Sir, go right ahead. Please state your name and address for the record. Good afternoon. My name is Jesse Bennett, 3848 West Newland. I live in the area. Um, I do have a concern I'd like to bring uh, to the commission to consider. Um, and that is the ditch or the creek that runs south of the property. 
there more and more as the area grows, a lot of children tend to use the sidewalks in the areas. I noticed that on the plans it shows it's undeveloped and there's no... Um, uh, well, I would like the commission to just take into account that we want to make sure that that area is safe or, or that there's some type of plan to make sure that children who are using or people who are using that side of the street have a, a safe access or, or area to walk on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to testify? Would the applicant like to come back and respond to anything? Uh, Matt Garner, um, address 224 16th Avenue South in Nampa. Um, as far as the, the, the canal there, I think it is a condition of the approval that there will be a pathway that's gonna be built along the creek there on the north side that will be, in, in like we said, that big field back behind there will be developed. It's gonna be activity fields and, and pl with that pathway going through there, you know, it will make that uh, usable along that side. And Very so, good, thanks, Pat. That's it. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? I would entertain a motion to close this public hearing. Mr. Chair. Mr. I'm, Holland. I move we close the public hearing for the Silmeda Church, H-2018-0110. Uh, second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on H-2018-0110. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to close public hearing is passed. Alt. Mr. Casanelli. I'm, I'm in favor. They've, you know, um, they were granted a, a CP approval in 2000, was it 2014 or one? When was it? 14. 14. Okay. Too many dates tonight. <laughs> um, I, I think it, you know, they're, they want to comply. They're uh, with everything. No objections from staff. I think it all looks good and I think it'll fit in that, in that, uh, in that area nicely. Mr. Holland. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I don't have any concerns with the application. I think it looks like a, a nice nice layout. I think it's great on that corner. Um, there's, It's always nice to see something other than houses on corners when you've got a lot of traffic going on them. So I appreciate the site plan. I think they've got a lot of green space in it, which we always like seeing, especially when there's a, a pathway that connects into some of the neighboring, neighboring neighborhoods and other uses in the future. So uh, no concerns here. Mr. Chair, I... Uh, Mr. Yearsley. I, I, when the application came forward, I was like, I thought we already approved that, but I understand why we're doing it again. I, I voted for it the first time. I <laughs> will vote for it on the second time. And I, I totally agree. I think the, the site plan looks great. Um, and just for clarification, Sonia, we don't have any problem with them using the existing structure as a job trailer as long as it's removed before uh, zoning, or I mean, be, before occupancy, correct? Mr. Chair, correct. Okay. No, I think it, it's a great design. I think you guys are going through design review anyway, and so I think it uh, should be a good addition to that neighborhood. So I think I will entertain a motion unless there's additional comments. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Casanelli. Uh, after considering all staff, applicant, public testimony, I move to approve file number H-2018-0110 as presented as staff report for the hearing date of November 1st, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve H2018-0110. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you. for. We appreciate it. Let them clear out for a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll uh, open the public hearing on H2018-0109, elevate Franklin storage, and start with the staff report. Did you get all of them tonight? I did, Mr. Chair. I am. The lucky one. Wow. <laughs> you draw the short straw. Now I'm gonna be, and now I'm going to be teased incessantly by staff about your Did you need a water break or anything? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure I'm happy. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, 
All righty. The next application before you is a request for a, a rezone application. There is a development agreement modification as well, but that is um, for council review. You can make any comments you'd like, but um, anyway, it doesn't require commission action. Uh, this site consists of 3.53 acres of land. It's zoned LO, located at 3755 West Perugia Street. Adjacent land use and zoning to the east is uh, church, zone CN. To the south is uh, residential uses across Franklin Road, zoned R15. To the west is agricultural property, zoned RUT in Ada County. And to the north is multifamily residential, zoned R15. This property was annexed um, back in 2005 uh, with the Silver Oaks development and platted as Umbria subdivision. Um, there was a development agreement that was required with that, which has since been amended. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation for this property is medium high density residential, and it is within our 10 mile interchange specific area plan. The applicant is requesting a modification to the existing development agreement to remove the subject property from the agreement and a rezone of 3.53 acres of land from the LO to the R15 zoning district for the development of a, an accessory self-service storage facility for the existing multifamily development to the north. Uh, the storage facility is subject to the specific use standards listed in the Unified Development Code. Um, I would like to note that this, I, I mentioned that this is an accessory self-service storage facility. It is not for the general public. It is only for accessory uh, use for the multifamily development, Silver Oaks, that currently exists to the north. So they are prohibited from renting to the public. Um, that is a provision of the recommended development agreement. A conceptual development plan uh, was submitted as shown that depicts an indoor storage facility with several different uh, sizes of storage units. Access is provided uh, via West Perugia Street. A secondary access is proposed via North Umbry Hills Avenue as required um, for self-service storage facilities. A 10-foot wide landscape street buffer is required along Umbria Hills Avenue and West Perugia Street, and a 25-foot wide buffer is required along Franklin Road in accord with UDC standards. The Kennedy Lateral runs uh, along the west boundary of the site. This council previously approved a waiver to allow the lateral to remain open and not be piped. Staff is recommending a six-foot tall wrought iron fence is provided matching that to the north in the multifamily development to preserve public safety. Conceptual building elevations were submitted as shown for the proposed storage structures. Uh, building materials consist of metal paneling, hardy paneling, and stone veneer. The architectural standards manual uh, prohibits metal paneling as a finished material. However, it can be used as an accent or secondary field material. So the elevations submitted with the certificate of zoning compliance should be in compliance um, with the design standards in the architectural standards manual. There has been no written testimony submitted on this application, and staff is recommending approval of the um, proposed rezone. However, there is an outstanding issue that kind of came out um, in the last minute on this project. Um, when this property was annexed and subdivided, there was a road trust that was required to be submitted to ACHD for half the cost of construction of the bridge and extension of um, Perugia Street over the Kennedy Lateral. Um, when this property was annexed, it was part of the overall um, Silver Oaks development, so all of the R15 area uh, that you see there. Uh, the trust was held for 10 years by CHD and then released because the property to the west had not yet developed, and they were supposed to be the partner in the other half of the cost of that um, bridge and the street extension. Um, because a crossing over the lateral and extension of uh, Perugia is still needed, staff recommended a provision of the development agreement um, in the staff report requiring the applicant to submit a new road trust to ACHD for those improvements. ACHD was in agreement with that and then um, later retracted that um, recommendation or requirement in their staff report. Um, because this application is not for a subdivision, ACHD um, cannot require and will not hold a road trust for those improvements. And the city um, does not hold road trusts. Therefore, the commission um, should consider tonight and make a recommendation on whether or not the improvements should be required in their entirety with this application or not require them at all. 
um, not requiring them at all would require the developer of the adjacent property to the west to complete the improvements in their entirety unless an alternate agreement for the improvements is reached with the affected property owners. So staff did just want to call that out tonight and uh, let you consider that. Um, staff will stand for any questions you might have. Any questions for staff? I have a question. Mr. Mr. Castanelli. Uh, Sonia, is there, along that lateral, um, is there a, is, is any of that, is there a, a, a city public pathway along that at all, current uh, or planned? Chairman Castanelli, there is not. Is there I'm one sure nearby? Um, trying to remember where it runs here. Um, give me just a second here. Eh, I am not sure, but I can pull up the Pathways Master Plan if you'd like to know. I'm just concerned because that, that is, we did approve apartment buildings to the, to the west mm -hmm. recently, right? I believe, and that's going to be... Uh, the, the commission recommended approval, but the council ended up denying that the application. The council denied that? Okay. Application, yes. There's a new application coming back. There, okay. And I mean, everything is going to be developed. I, it seems to me like there should be some pathways in there. I don't know why in that area. So I'd be curious about that. But obviously there, that wasn't looked at and staff, you didn't, staff didn't look at that, did they? We looked at it, it's not part of the master uh, um, pathways plan. So there is no pathway requirement on this property. Thank you. Any additional questions for staff? Yeah. And Sonia, so we don't have any mechanism besides asking Becky really, really nicely to uh, work with the other owner of the land to, we don't have, there's no bonding capabilities, there's no, there's no feasible capability we have or a tool we have to, I guess we, we can hear from the applicant and see what their thoughts are. Yeah, there, Chairman, there, we cannot hold a surety. Um, so the options are require the, this applicant as a development agreement provision um, to construct it in its entirety okay. um, or not, or possibly work with that property owner to the west, which I understand they are actually, they did submit an application, a new application for that property. So it is, um, has been accepted by the city and it will be coming before you soon. Okay. Any additional questions? Becky, would you like to come forward, please, ma'am? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Commission, Becky McKay, Engineering Solutions, 1029 North Rosario, Meridian, business address. Um, the screen's not working. <laughs> I'm trying to try to work on it, but I have no idea why. <laughs> um, I'm here this evening representing 10 Mile Development, LLC. Um, as Sonia indicated, uh, we're here this evening to ask for a rezone of 3.53 acres from LO to um, medium high density residential or R15 along with the development agreement modification to facilitate the construction of an accessory use self-storage facility uh, for our Franklin at 10 Mile Apartments. Um, this particular lot uh, was platted back in 2005 with the original Umbria subdivision. It was intended that it would either be office or possibly a daycare. And so all of the city utilities, public street improvements, pressure irrigation. Oh, killer. Thank you. Uh, were installed to this lot 13 years ago. And this lot has, has been vacant and, you know, they had, they tried to market it on multiple occasions, but uh, really didn't get any interest in it for office or daycare use. Um, and so we kind of came around to the fact that the apartment complex really has a need for storage. Um, we have 30% of our 369 dwelling units in the apartment complex, which we've constructed in three phases over the past few years. 
uh, 30% of those are three bedroom. Um, and we have 98 garages. And they kind of took an assessment and of those 98 garages that we provided, approximately 65% of those garages are used to store not vehicles, but to store furniture, RVs, whatever accessories people have. Um, they're seeing that uh, approximately 30% of their turnover is due to people moving into the complex on a temporary basis for one year or less um, who are in the process of building a home. So they're storing a significant amount of their personal possessions and they're renting one of the garages. So we have had some significant parking issues even though we met and exceeded the parking requirements under the ordinance out here at the facility. So we kind of got kicking around the idea of, you know, maybe a mini storage would be appropriate. So we did meet with the staff. We talked to them about what our options were. Um, obviously, this is located within the 10-mile area uh, specific plan. And the staff said, well, you know, storage is allowed uh, in an IL zone but based on the medium to high density designation on the land use map, we really couldn't support um, an IL rezone, but since this would be accessory to your multifamily, if you rezone it from LO to R15, then an accessory uh, storage facility is allowable. So we kind of, you know, met and went back and, and the architects uh, tried some different variations on that site plan and and what what you see here is kind of a aerial map shows you the uh, 10 mile Christian church that's located uh, to the east of the project um, and then you can see the apartment complex this aerial is kind of behind the times because uh, we've constructed phase one, two, and three, so we have all 369 units online. Uh, the project that was proposed to the west, as Sonia indicated, was denied by the council. Uh, the council was concerned about bringing on another large multifamily project in this area um, because it's kind of stretching um, emergency services uh, when these fill up so quickly and there are other multifamily projects uh, that are being constructed south in Beriah on the south side of Franklin and then obviously within the Brighton facility uh, just east of 10 Mile Road. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea of the overall site plan. Um, the uh, Perugia Street and both Umbria are local streets and the landscape requirements are 10 feet. However, we do have 20. We have 20 feet because initially due to the fact that this was an LO zone, uh, we were required to have a 20 foot uh, perimeter buffer uh, as a transition from the R15 to the LO. Uh, the landscaping along Franklin Road is 25 feet, and we have the Kennedy Lateral that is open and traverses or is adjoining the property on the western boundary. As Sonia stated in her report, the City Council granted a waiver of the piping of that Kennedy Lateral, um, so it is an open facility. One of the things that the staff obviously stressed was the aesthetics. Um, because the 10 mile area specific plan talks about um, along the arterials that you have significant amount of landscaping, that you have modulation articulation in your, in your design, and they said, you know, we really want you to kind of dress that up along that corridor. And so we, we basically, you know, took all of staff's recommendations. This is just kind of a picture shows you of the vacant parcel that's been there for 13 years and then the multifamily uh, dwellings that you see uh, in the foreground. Um, there's the vacant parcel. That's the site plan. This kind of gives you an elevation. So we kind of had an architectural feature right there at that intersection. We'll have signage 
uh, for the apartments that we plan on uh, applying for along with the design review. Um, but we wanted to, you know, make this look uh, consistent, compatible with what we have there in our uh, apartment complex. One of the other things was staff said, you know, go through that 10 mile interchange specific area plan and, and we'd like you obviously to justify uh, how this fits into that plan. And so I did review the plan and the plan basically talks about encouraging a broad range of uses in close proximity to one another, including uses beyond those specifically does, uh, defined within the ordinance. Um, and this storage facility uh, being adjacent and accessory to our apartment complex falls within uh, what I consider, you know, mixed or complementary uses that are described in the, the 10 mile specific plan. Uh, the 10 mile specific plan also highlights a diversity in building forms and encourages neighborhood serving uh, services and retail uses so that we um, reduce the number of trips on the arterials. Um, we believe that as far as this is an accessory use to our multifamily development that meets that test of integration of uses and all of it, obviously the, um, the principle that's also included in the plan where it encourages a multiple income producing uses uh, within a particular project and that's what we have before you. So the we have to have that rezone from the LO to the R15 for this. It's all enclosed, self-storage. Um, and the existing development agreement, uh, we've asked staff that uh, to remove this parcel from the old development agreement and then we'll enter into a new development agreement uh, that addresses the conditions of approval. Um, we'll have a solid masonry wall along that exterior. Um, like I said, we have articulation. We've broken up the expanse of the wall. Um, we have the focal point at the Franklin and Umbria Hills intersection, which the staff asked us. They asked us to dress up and, and provide extensive landscaping um, so that we, we continue that that corridor look because Franklin Road is an entryway into the city. Um, and then our hours of operation will be in compliance with the code, which will be 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, I reviewed the staff report, and one of the things that Sonia brought up was Ada County Highway District. Uh, they, did, they did finally get a report over to Sonia. It was dated October 30th. Initially, there was a trust fund um, for what they considered a bridge across the Kennedy lateral. The Kennedy lateral is not a large lateral. Um, it's not like Settlers or the Rydenbaugh. Um, it's a small la smaller lateral. Um, it's like 36 to 48 inch, uh, depending on where you're located and the um, CFS that's running through it. Um, so a bridge is not required, it would just take a pipe um, in order to cross it. Uh, we did do a trust fund, uh, or the previous developer did a trust fund ten years ago, over ten years ago, and then ACHD, since it was never utilized, released those funds. Um, we've built the Umbria uh, Stub Street to, the, to our boundary. Um, so I don't really feel that it's necessary for us to trust fund just for a pipe or portion of that pipe. When the property to the west develops, they'd put the pipe in. Uh, I have many projects where that's the case, um, that, that the responsibility falls on one particular development, especially when it's a pipe. Uh, where we need to be concerned about sharing the cost is when we do have a large waterway that takes a bridge structure, like a big box culvert, um, because those can cost, you know, anywhere from 140 to $220,000, depending on the span and the size of the waterway. This is not the case for the Kennedy lateral. Um, 
Stacy Yarrington with Ada County Highway District did send an email out to the architects, myself and Sonia, stating that the district has discussed it internally and they are no longer requesting that we do a trust fund. So I asked the commission to obviously modify uh, condition, uh, I believe it is condition 2E where it says submit a road trust to Ada County Highway District for half the cost of construction of a bridge over the Kennedy lateral. Um, like I said, it's just going to take a pipe. So the highway district is, is waiving that requirement. We can't trust with the city. The highway district is a governing body on that facility. Um, secondly, concerning the conditions of approval, um, item, I believe it is under public works, B2. It talks about providing easements for the project for sewer or water uh, prior to uh, noting it on the plat and providing that prior to development plans. Well, obviously, if we have any easements, we're going to have to create those easements after we do the development plan. So that condition kind of needs to be a little bit reworded where we're not platting this. It's already a platted lot. Um, I think if you just say all easements must be submitted and reviewed along with the development plan approval, um, then that would be appropriate, not the, the word prior. Uh, needs to be removed and any reference to a note on a plat needs to be removed. Uh, the other item is item three uh, where it talks about uh, all piping of all adjoining irrigation ditches, canals, or laterals. Um, it needs to be noted that uh, we have a waiver for the Kennedy lateral, so that's not applicable. And lastly, um, we kind of, we've, I met with the applicants, the architects, and we were just a, a little bit concerned about 2B. Uh, 2B reads, the storage facility is allowed to operate in conjunction with and as an accessory use to the multifamily development to the north, i.e. Silver Oaks, and shall provide only storage service for the residents of the multifamily development. We are absolutely fine with that sentence. That's, we, we are in total agreement. What, what we have a little bit of heartburn over is the last sentence within that saying, providing storage service for non-residents, i.e. the general public is prohibited. And we started talking about kind of some scenarios. And so, I'll, this is my last comment, sir. Um, Say we have a, someone who rents a unit um, and they obviously are an, a, one of our residents at the apartment complex. They rent a storage unit, they put their stuff in it, they're building a house, and then they move out of the apartment complex, but they still have the unit possibly a, beyond their residence at the apartment complex, then what do we do? Um, you know, they are obvious, you know, we may have a situation like that. And so, like I said, we are in agreement with the condition. We just aren't comfortable with that last sentence. And I don't think that last sentence is, is is necessary because I think it, it makes it very clear with the first sentence that the u, what the use of this is. And this is a small complex. We're, we're talking 3.53 acres. And the, mo, and the storage units that I've done, uh, which are open to the public, are typically between 7 and 10 acres. Um, and so this is small on the scale of of storage so and that and so it fits within that accessory I think definition but I, I, I would ask the Commission if they would remove that last sentence because we're just really concerned we don't want to get crossways with the staff we don't want to get have problems with our residents and but 
we, we just feel a little bit uncomfortable with the wording on that. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions for the applicant? Uh, Commissioner Mr. Holland. Go right ahead. Sorry. Um, Becky, one question. You, you kind of already mentioned this, but just making sure um, all of these are enclosed units. There's not going to be no, RV storage or anything like that on it? No. Okay. All enclosed. Uh, Becky, are you good with uh, the additional parking space that's being required? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. 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 Yearsley. Um, so you said that it's a, it, all that's required is a pipe. Do you know what size a pipe? Um, I've, I've piped the Kennedy lateral at, at a couple of different locations. Um, it's a 40, I think it's a 48 inch if we go south. But as it's delivering water, then obviously the pipe size becomes reduced. Um, you know, it may end up being a 42 or a 36, um, and they would just basically pipe where that road crossing is. Right. We're not talking about a box culvert well, requirement. That's why, that's why I wanted no. to, you know, the pipe, no. you can... You can go with different high size of pipes. That's why I just wanted to yeah, clarify. Yeah, typically, like Settlers Canal, for example, um, I've had to go box with a box culvert, and right. it's a seventy takes a seventy two inch. Right. And those facilities, uh, those bridges, like I said, they, I think the last one I did was about one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. But when we're talking just a pipe, you know, that's a different animal. Okay. Any additional questions? For the applicant. Hi. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to mention someone asked about the pathway. I believe there is a multi use pathway, but it is south of Franklin along that drain. And we typically are not allowed to put multi use pathways along a live ditch yeah. based on Nampa Meridian's requirements. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Chris, do we have anybody sign up to testify? Mr. Chair, there were no sign-ins. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify? Sir, we'll start with the gentleman over here. Please state your name and address for the record. Sure. Heath Quist, 4192 West Newland Street. Um, I live in the area, and I've helped a lot of people do move-ins here at the um, apartments that we're talking about, and the need is definitely there. Um, a lot of going back and forth to different storage units, and uh, I think it's a great idea. So, yeah. Sure. Sir. Mike Green, 4168 South River Basin, Boise. I'm actually uh, an investor partner in both the apartments and the storage facility. So I just want to share with the commission um, some interesting facts that you might find on how we sort of arrived at this decision to move forward with a self-storage facility on the site. So as you can see, that site is irregular shaped, and we went through a multitude of different options on limited office, light office, light retail, and never really got anywhere with the market in our marketing and, and moving forward with that design. And we started to look at what we see in our apartment community there. As Becky mentioned, it's 368 units. Annualized, we turn over about 80% of those units. So that's nearly 275 to 300 units per year that we're turning over. A lot of these residents coming to our community are from out of the state. We track our traffic, and 65% of our traffic coming in to visit our community are from out of state. A lot, we see a lot of folks coming from California, Washington, Nevada, and Oregon. We see residents that have rented a unit in our apartment complex, they're renting four garage units because they've got nowhere to store their storage. So we're really offering a temporary housing solution. A lot of these folks are coming in six months, a year, they'll break their lease because they're building a house elsewhere in the community. So we found that we really have a, de a demand for this. We spend about $46 million on the apartment complex, and so we really care deeply on how that front corner comes out, and that's why you see the the architectural investment that we're making in that site. That's it. Thank you. We appreciate it. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Any additional? Uh, yes, sir. Jesse Bennett, 3848 West Newland. I live right behind the apartments. A lot of the uh, 
people who move in and out are members of our congregation. I have a responsibility um, for helping them also move in and out. And we love the idea of the extra storage. It makes our lives easier um, by not having to go in a lot of different places and, and helping these people find different areas. So uh, all for the idea. Thank you. Any additional comments for anybody else? Okay, Becky, would you like, do you have any additional thoughts? Okay. With that, I will entertain a motion and close the public hearing on H2018-0109. Mr. Chair, I move we close the public hearing on uh, Franklin Storage H-2018-0109. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on H-2018-0109. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Commissioners, thoughts? I actually kind of think it's a unique idea, you know, to provide a storage unit for your apartment complex. You know, you know, makes a lot of sense for. Sounds like they definitely have the need or the yeah. issue. Yeah, and it may free up some parking as well. So, I think it works out well. Mr. Holland, Mr. Casnelli, thoughts? You know, my my first thought when I saw this application was, it seems like we've seen a lot of storage unit projects lately, um, especially when there's a storage unit that's even on this screenshot here that's just northeast of the property. Um, so it makes me scratch my head a little bit about having another storage facility there. Um, the only other concern I have is that it's it's on Franklin, which is a major major corridor right off the freeway. It's one of the first things you see when you come into into Meridian from that 10 mile interchange, um, depending on which way you're going. So I guess there, there's a little bit of concern there that the only thing I think that helps it is that it's kind of a triangular in shape and so um, you're not using a ton of the frontage on Franklin. Yep. And I think they've they've done a nice job of trying to have some mod modulation, have some um, visual interest in the front part of it. So I appreciate that. Um, I don't really have too many concerns on some of the conditions that she had gone through if we wanna go through those. Um, I, I don't have a concern with changing the last sentence of 2B to remove the general public prohibited for, as long as it says that the primary use is, in a, is for this apartment complex. I think yep. most people would know if they're moving out of that complex, they would eventually have to move their stuff. And maybe we could make a condition that tenants who are in that apartment complex would have to move their belongings within a certain time frame, if that would help with it. Or I'm not sure what's, how staff feels about that, but. Sonia, I, my thought is there's no way, I mean, reasonably, unless it's code enforcement, how do you track that anyway? Mr. Chair, there's no way to track that. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I just foresee there being an issue if we, if we don't restrict it, um, you let people move out, they're no longer residents. That first sentence doesn't even apply. I mean, it's not correct if, if we even leave the first sentence because they're no longer residents at that point if they move out. It, it, the challenge I think becomes is you have to be, it's got to be reasonable. So it, it's, they move out, they're building a house, they built the house, is it six months, is it a year? I mean, but the, the, the real practical thing for me is how do you guys track this? I mean, there, unless we it's don't. code enforcement, that's the challenge. <laughs> I, I would and suggest that if you, um, I don't have a problem you know, with the time frame. Leave that open <laughs> to that, to that you require that they put it in their CCNRs or you know, some kind of agreement, and then we get a copy of that. And I would, I think I'd be okay with that. Because I, I, I think it's almost impossible to reasonably track it on the city side, uh, but it's, I think it's unreasonable to say, like, at the day that you move out, you must move all of your stuff that day. I think that's just, that's a challenge. And so I, I get both sides of the, the issue. Well, I think it, it just to add to that, I think it would be easier for the property management company that's renting out the the units, as somebody moves out, they're gonna know that that person's not living there anymore. So they could say, you know, as you're moving out, turning in your keys, you've got within six months, we'd like you to have your storage. 60 long days. Or, out, whatever it is, yeah. whatever time frame. if we wanna put a time frame on it. But I don't have a, a problem with removing the word prohibited, I think, uh, or the general public piece. I think having the first sentence that says it's it's for residents, um, yeah. and that the they would have to work with only residents in who they lease to. That, I think that would be reasonable. Um, I don't have another concern either. She had made a comment about um, all easements must be submitted and approved rather than um, along with the development. Development, yeah. 
I don't have a concern with that either. Commissioner Casanelli. Um, I will say storage units are one of my least favorite. <laughs> I, they're, I, they're necessary as I'll get out, I get it. Um, I just think they're, they're not the most attractive things to look at. They're typically a big blank wall. Um, these are about as, they, the architectural renderings seem to be about as, as nice as, as, they, can, as they can be. Um, I, I, I agree with, with uh, Commissioner Yearsley. It will probably help the, the parking situation yeah. over there. So I, th I think it's a good solution. They've tried everything else. So from that standpoint, I'm in favor of it. I would like to see the condition. I'm okay with the removing the change in the easement condition if staff is okay with that. Um, with regards to the uh, uh, that 2B, I would say leave it there. There's you know there's not a whole lot of teeth. It, it it's if somebody moves in there and they're a tenant when they rent it, they're following the they're following the the guidelines. Um, it's going to be up to them to. I mean the, the whole idea of this is to um, provide storage for the for the tenants. So they're gonna they're gonna want to get people out of there. Um, code. I mean it's going to be pretty difficult for a code enforcement to go out there and try and do it. I would just like to leave it as is. It, it tries to put a little teeth into it. I don't, I don't think removing that last sentence is going to change it much. The intent is if you live there, you're the only ones that get access to it initially. Yep. A after that, there's not much the city can do anyway, so I would just soon just leave it. I like it left in there that way. And then we've got to come up with a resolution for, for a pipe. I don't think it's, and I don't know what that's going to look like, but I don't think it's fair to stick the, the owners of the adjacent property with the, with the full tab on that. I don't know how we do that. The challenge, I think, is it's there's no teeth available to us. We either give it them the whole boat right now, or we don't. So it's either, I mean, that's the challenge. It's, it almost becomes the cost of development of the next project. And I, I mean, you deal with this a lot more on, on your engineering side. What, do you have any suggestions? Because I, I mean, offsite work is never fun. And it happens all the time in this situation. They bonded for it. ACH doesn't want to do it right. now, and so I'm not sure what teeth we have. Well, and I, you know, I, I looked at that. If it's only a 48-inch pipe with head walls, you're not talking a significant dollar amount. Um, and not knowing what that future use is over there, does it make sense to connect until we know what that future use is? Um, it's hard for me to say build a build a pipe. You know yeah. what I mean? And so um, I, I, I'm not sure if I like it the, as well as I do, but uh, putting that onerous onto the second owner is probably a, a better, we can make a more informed decision based on that after we see what they're proposing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sonia, is there a cross access easement there? Or what? what is driving it besides just interconnection? besides the currently, I mean, for that condition of approval. Chairman, I'm not sure I'm understanding, but um, there's no need for a cross access easement when the, the street's dedicated, it's public. So it street. is dedicated, That's a, that was my, I'm, um, I'm sorry, because it just looks like a cul-de-sac with nothing. It really. is a cul-de-sac. Um, however, there is right of way to that west property boundary. It just isn't paved to the west property boundary. So there will be a gap in between there until the, um, Culvert Bridge, Bridge Culvert is what ACHD calls it, um, is constructed. And just a side note, the, the ACHD report said that they, the current um, cost estimate for this project is 52000 For the Bridge Culvert is 52000 Yes. Wow. So. chunk of cash mm -hmm. seems expensive for a 48 inch culvert yeah honestly i'll read you the, i'll read you what it says in the ACHD report it doesn't entirely make sense to me <laughs> it says the current cost for this project well let me back up um the current cost for this project is estimated at fifty two thousand dollars therefore consistent with ACHD's prior action the applicant should be required to pay for the developer's 
proportionate share of the costs and provide a public rights of way trust fund, road trust, in the amount of $14,300. I'm not, I, I'm not quite understanding the difference there, which is, they say is 13,000 plus a 10% contingency. So it's, their portion of it would be 14,000 out of the 58? That's, that's asphalt, the culvert, <laughs> that's everything, right? <laughs> It's the full cost of, of developing that portion of it. That doesn't seem, seems odd. So there is a condition in the staff report currently that they provide a road trust to ACHD. So regardless, that condition needs to be modified or, or, or stricken. Yeah. yeah. And then just a side note back to um, Commissioner Casanelli's question earlier about the multi-use pathway. Um, there is one currently that runs, if you can see my pointer here, it runs through the church site to the east, and it um, goes kind of right up this line here. It goes through the storage facility and up to the north, and then it also comes down. It's eventually going to come through the TM Creek site um, to the south of Frank Franklin Road here. So it is, it is pretty close to this property, but it doesn't run through that. Additional thoughts? I mean, for the comment on the storage unit, and I'm seeing it in the same picture, I agree. I do think um, it is a very small footprint. And it's, I think, for what it's being used for, I think they've taken a really difficult piece of property that wasn't very marketed, wasn't easy to market, and turn it into a use that will probably make their residents' lives a lot happier and deal with parking, and it's probably going into the church or other areas. Um, so that, that, as an accessory use, makes total sense to me. Um, how we deal with the road trust thing is a conundrum. I'm not sure I can answer it this 10 seconds, but... I don't either. It's a... Uh, I don't have a problem with the project itself. I think that that's the question mark is, does the person that comes late have to deal with the offsite? Thoughts. I don't know. I mean, with ACHD saying they're no longer willing to do it, I don't know where the where the teeth come because we can't do it. We can't bond for it, correct? There's no sureties that we could put in place. Mr. Chair, no, we cannot accept a surety for that, but we can, as a DA provision, require them to construct it. The whole thing. Yes. Yeah, that's. I don't think then, then we're telling them to, to put pay. the whole bill. Yeah, and I don't think that's right either. The other alternative is to have them work with the neighbor to come up with an agreement. But, I, you know, it, it's, it's not likely that neighbor would be real excited to do that if their project doesn't go forward. Right. <laughs> so we don't want to tie their hands with their development and hold them up if that doesn't happen. So that's the, that's the issue with that requirement. <laughs> so thinking outside of the culvert box, um, can we... <laughs> <laughs> put, a, put a piece of this in the in the DA, requesting that the applicant work with the adjoining neighbor to find a cost share agreement that would work for both parties as part of it. But it not I mean it ha, it's not contingent and it, it it's in there, but it's not. I mean as much teeth as we can give it. Is that an option? Always an option. Because I I mean I'd like them to have a share of the of the deal, but I think that's the only thing. That is got some kind of a direction we can go is put it in the DA, request that they work with the adjoining party and, and try to find a cost agreement that works for both parties. I think that's a matter. That probably should be a what if if they can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, run for ACHD. Oh, sorry. That's not reason. <laughs> um. <laughs> You'll probably know here shortly if that project. Um, you know, gets gets moved forward or not, and gets approved. Well, I don't want to hold these the guys up for three months or so, but <sighs> but this project's before you now. <laughs> yep. Well, Mr. Chair, I, the one thing we could do, and I don't know that this is fair to the the other user either, but you could say we would request the DA to have them work together, and in the what if situation, if they don't come to an agreement, then the latecomer would end up to pay taking. It. The they have every they reason work to, on it. to work with them. Yeah. 
The only other thought I have, um, back to Commissioner Casanelli's comment earlier about the uh, 2B with the last sentence about the general public prohibited. I think rather than, than striking that last sentence, I think um, maybe it would still be good to put that tenants could move out within a reasonable time frame, whether we define it or they define it. Thoughts? I'm good. <laughs> Next steps, folks? Well, let me ask this question first. Do we want any feedback from Becky on any of these things we were asking? Or are we, do you have enough information to make a decision? I think we're pretty close, but we might have to go through all the modifications again one more time and make sure we have them all straight. Okay. Commissioner Yearsley, do you have any additional thoughts? Um, you know, I think actually adding that to the DA just, you know, re, you know, request that the applicant um, try to work with the adjacent property owner to uh, good faith effort to construct a, a, a cost share agreement, you know, kind of leave enough weasel words that they can back out of it if, if something can't be agreed upon. And uh, if they can't come on an agreement, then they can, the latecomer can build it themselves you know so I think it uh, you know it gives them a way out to not build it if the other property doesn't come through but yet kind of gives a little bit of teeth to try to come up with a solution so um, so I, I think that uh, works out well mr. chair if I may uh, mr. Parsons just suggested um Another alternative, we have roughly a month <laughs> before this goes to the city council. Um, you might recommend that the applicant work with adjacent property owner to see if they can come up with an agreement between that time period. And the next application, there are the adjoining properties coming before us in the next two to three months is what we're thinking? No, within the next month or so. Oh, okay, so it's soon. I actually we have the application. I, I like that idea because it gives you know that adjacent property owner to uh, some onerous to come to it come to the table with the deal <laughs> or that we so. stick them with the bill at the end I mean, absolutely that's the, i think that's a i think that's, that's very appropriate and it, it, it makes it a lot cleaner to be provided in the that way thank you bill thank you very much for the information um do we want a time frame on move out of what's reasonable i think Becky's looking for guidelines on not getting crossways with the city, so let's give her some thoughts. If we have, if you like the language leaving it in there, let's, I would suggest we put a time frame on it, but that's my thought. You guys can go in. Any addition or any thoughts? I mean, or are you good with the language as it is? Um, you know, I think, again, this is, all comes down to enforcement. We can leave that provision in there and, you know, who's going to enforce it? So. Um, adding that that provision in there for up to a year, I don't know if I have an issue with that. Just just adding, it was pretty, you know, you know, adding that additional sentence or something to that effect. Good. I'm fine with adding up to a year as well. Uh, I don't have a concern with it cause I, as long as the the point is that they're not setting up lease agreements for storage space to the general public. They're working with the the tenants yeah. or people who are moving out. Yeah. They just don't want to get in trouble if somebody ever does call code enforcement on them because they're not following that prohibited rule. Right. They want to take a stab? <sighs> Commissioner Yearsley. <laughs> <laughs> After considering all staff, applicant, and public testimony, I move to recommend approval to City Council of file number H2018-0109, as presented in the staff report for the hearing date of November 1st, 2018, with the following modifications, that uh, um, item number 2.E be stricken um, from the, uh, the, the conditions, um, that uh, condition 3 be noted that the, uh, there is a waiver for the not having to pipe the lateral, um, to add a consent uh, 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 to add to two point B that uh, um, 
existing um, renters can can lease the space up to a year after they move out. And I wasn't sure about the easement. That all easements can go along with the development, not prior to? That one. So. Language she had put in there was all easements must be submitted and approved. Okay. Along with the development. Along with the development. May I clarify the motion, please? Uh, yes. The first item you mentioned, I believe you said um, item 2B be stricken? You said 2E. 2E. Thank you. Yes. We cover it all then? Do we have it? Do you want to, do you feel comfortable that you have everything? Good, thank you. Okay. I'll second it then. Oh, oh, oh good for oh. you. I want to the, also to add request that the uh, DA be modified that the applicant work with the adjacent property owner to come up with a cost share agreement for the piping across the pipe culvert um, across the Kennedy lateral prior to city council. I will revise my second and second that one. I have a, s a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes, and thank you very much. I think we have Uno Moss motion. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Holland. I move to close the uh, public hearing for the Planning and Zoning Commission for the date of November 1st, 2018. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Good night. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it.